Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. In a recent episode, I shared the importance of learning and understanding food nutrition labels. Because guess what? The things that we put in our bodies, such as food and drinks, they can affect our health, good or bad. So this is a pickup episode from that last episode. So if you hadn't had a chance to tune in and listen to the episode on nutrition facts labels, definitely go back and tune into that one. So for this week, we're going to talk about why cutting sugary drinks such as sodas, fruit juices, and so forth is one of the quickest ways to start losing weight. You know, I had to come to the realization and reality that I was not making good choices when it came to the things that I was drinking and the things that I was eating like sugary foods and so forth. But not only that, I was not drinking enough water on a daily basis. I was drinking way too much soda and other sugary drinks like your fruit juices, lemonades, sweet teas, and so forth. It was crazy, y'all. But when I decided to take my health seriously, I had to stop ignoring the fact that my body was craving sweets and sugary drinks. Yes, it was almost like an addiction. Not almost. It was an addiction. I just kept giving my body sugary drinks and I kept giving my body sugary foods. So guess what? My body wanted more of that not so good stuff. Research shows that getting sugar in liquid form is so much worse than getting it from solid food. That is why sugary beverages like soda and fruit juices are among the worst things you can put in your body. So for this week's episode, what are you going to learn? You're going to learn the importance of kicking that sugary addiction to drinks such as soda and fruit juices and learn why drinking water is so much better for you. It's a no brainer, right? But we're going to learn why water is an important key to losing weight. You're also going to receive my recommendations on how to eliminate sugary drinks from your diet and start losing those extra pounds. Listen, I did it. You can too. So stay tuned for the rest of today's episode. My friends, you don't want to miss it. Let's go. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo. My goal is to help diabetics and non-diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse and prevent type 2 diabetes. When I was 268 pounds, folks, and I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes back in August 2020, it was clear that I had a problem. Uh, not only was I overweight, I was considered obese. I was dealing with high blood pressure, hypertension. I was dealing with high cholesterol. My uh, blood glucose and sugar levels were off the charts and I got hospitalized. And in the hospitals, when I learned that I had type 2 diabetes, so I had to go on a journey of reversing type 2 diabetes. Now, at first, I didn't even know you can reverse it. I thought it was just something that was progressive, that uh, I was just going to have to live with type 2 diabetes for the rest of my life and be on meds for the rest of my life because, you know, I had heard that was other people's situation. But I started learning and started researching more about what type 2 diabetes is, what causes it, um, such as insulin resistance, but what causes insulin resistance and so forth. I had to learn about the anatomy of the pancreas and the liver and so forth. I mean, today I'm like a student, <laughs> a continued student of this area of diabetes and type 2 diabetes and diabetes education. And my goal is to help folks to live longer, live focused, live fit, and feel alive every day. So my size, folks, and my consumption and overconsumption of sugary drinks were negatively impacting my health. I can't stress it enough that that was an issue for me. I don't know about you. I don't know what your situation is. But if you're overweight, if you're considered obese and you have cravings, sugar cravings, and you're drinking a lot of soda, a lot of sugary drinks, sports drinks, fruit juices, and so forth, and you want to kick it, kick that habit, kick that addiction, this is the episode for you. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. I mean, on social media, you'll probably see different posts where I post the nutrition facts of certain sodas. Like the other day, I put up a post about there was this orange soda that I would always drink and always consume. 
um, there was also Pepsi and some other stuff that I would just always consume. So I decided to post a couple of pictures of the nutrition facts of certain drinks. And I drew some arrows to point your attention to um, not only the serving size, but the calorie intake, the carbohydrates that are loaded in those drinks in the form of sugars and added sugars. And you'll be surprised even down to the ingredients. Some of these drinks are just loaded with a bunch of stuff that we we don't need in our bodies. So my goal was to encourage people to drink less of soda and sugary drinks and drink more water because you know what? Our bodies are craving uh, or needing water and needing more healthier options when it comes to food and and drinks and so forth. So here are some ways that sugary drinks are not good for your health. You know, you can research this on your own. It's things that I had to learn and things that really help to shape the way that I think now. But I had to come to the realization that sugary drinks were not good for me. I mean, there's no no way around it. Now, some people may say, "Okay, Oscar, you're going way too extreme. You're starting to sound like one of these fanatics. Uh, No, I'm not. I'm just more conscious today than I have been in the past when it comes to the things that I put in my body. And I feel more energetic, folks. I'm off medication. I was able to reverse type two diabetes. And if people ask me today, Oscar, how did you start? to lose weight? What's one of the first things that you did to lose weight? And honestly, I'm not telling you something that I read in a book. I'm not telling you anything that I got off of an article. Uh, This is what I did for myself. And then as I started doing it for myself, as I started cutting the sugar drinks, the sugary drinks like the sodas, I mean, I went cold turkey. I was very serious. I stopped drinking the lemonades and the sweet teas. Um, definitely the sodas. And I would say the thing that I also started cutting back on because I didn't realize um, the negative the negative impact that it was having was also sports drinks like those high supposedly uh, electrolyte drinks uh, like your Gatorades and stuff like that. And I'm not knocking these companies. You know, I'm just highlighting the facts. And things like Gatorade, I would drink while I'm working out or before I was working out or even afterwards thinking that I I was really doing something good to my body. But I wasn't. I was just adding more sugar and I realized I was not losing weight. I mean, I would go to this popular smoothie place and get a 32 ounce uh, uh, smoothie or meal replacement smoothie, as they called it. You know, that was all marketing, but it was loaded with a bunch of sugar. That one 32 ounce smoothie that I thought was good was the equivalent of drinking three cans of soda. That's wild, folks, I'm telling you. So uh, here are some ways that sugary drinks are not good for your health. This is just a few, just a handful of things um, to consider. Number one, sugary drinks do not make you feel full and are strongly linked to weight gain. Number two, large amounts of sugar are turned into fat in your liver. And that's big. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Number three, sugary drinks drastically increase belly fat accumulation. You know, they call it beer belly, but this is called soda belly. Yeah, that's a real thing. Number four, sugary soda may cause insulin resistance, a key feature in what's called metabolic syndrome. Now, insulin resistance real quick is where, you know, your pancreas is producing the natural hormone, which is insulin in response to blood sugar or an increase in blood sugar, which is glucose, right? Blood glucose. But if your body's always like on overdrive trying to produce so much insulin, your cells become resistant to insulin where insulin no longer is able to absorb the glucose to bring your blood sugar down. Uh, and regulate your blood sugar. And then that sugar or glucose remains in your bloodstream. And that's no good because then it travels to other parts of your body and can lead to other issues and so forth, including type 2 diabetes. So again, number four, sugary drinks may cause insulin resistance. Number five, sugary sweetened beverages may be the leading dietary cause of type 2 diabetes, uh, according to research. Number six, sugary soda contains no essential nutrients 
is just a bunch of sugar, folks. Number seven, sugary soda may be addictive. Yes, it, it may be addictive. And number eight, the sugar and acids in soda are considered to be very detrimental to your dental health. Um, ask anybody who's probably been drinking soda all their life, and they've probably gone to the dentist a lot. Um, um, that's I'm one of them. <laughs> So those are just a few ways that sugary drinks are not good for your health. Uh, you can Google it. You can research it for yourself and learn more about uh, the effects of sugary drinks on your health. OK, let's move on. What is liquid sugar? This is very important. Liquid sugar is the sugar that you consume in the form of liquid from your beverages like sweetened soda, your lemonades and so forth. So it's very self-explanatory. Um, growing up, we used to drink um, Kool-Aid and basically Kool-Aid was sugar water. <laughs> we used to put a lot of sugar in it uh, with water and it was just, you know, remember Mr. Kool-Aid? Yeah, some of you guys remember Mr. Kool-Aid. I think he's still around. Uh, we need to put him out of business. Anyway, um, the sugar in beverages is often highly concentrated and easy to consume in large amounts without feeling full. Think about it. You know, in the middle of the night, you wake up thirsty. And most of us, what we've done in the past is go to the refrigerator and we get some fruit juice. You know, for me, it was either fruit punch or Welch's grape juice or some orange juice. And we would drink it maybe one cup. I know me, I would drink one glass, then go back for a second, then go back for a third because I was never really full. It was satiating for a few moments, for a few minutes, but then I was thirsty again um, because I was trying to uh, satisfy a craving, but that craving was never really satisfied uh, or satisfying. So some examples of these drinks are fairly obvious, right? Such as sodas and fruit punch, a couple of few that I've already named, like the sweet teas and the lemonades. And I'm going to be repetitive in some of these things to really drive home the point of what I'm saying. However, many other beverages are high in sugar as well. You know, for example, although you may drink a fruit juice, it uh, fruit juices like the store bought fr fruit juices are typically considered a healthy option. Right. In in some regards, at least that's what we think. But you do have a whole bunch of varieties that don't have a bunch of uh, added sugar and some that do have a bunch of added sugar. When I did my episode on reading the nutrition facts labels, I kind of show some comparisons um, where you have the added sugar versus um, natural sugars and so forth. And it's really something that we should pay attention to because just because something says 100 percent fruit juice doesn't necessarily mean that it's really good for you. Uh, you have to pay attention to what's actually included. Look at the uh, nutrition facts labels for the added sugars and so forth, and you'll be surprised. Uh, and to be honest, sometimes those fruit juices, those store-bought fruit juices are higher in sugar content than some sodas. So that's just something to keep in mind. Not only higher in sugar, but higher in calories. So again, my goal is to help educate you so you can educate yourself and learn more. So a high intake of fruit juice may lead to some health problems as drinking sugar sweetened beverages, right? So it's not like, oh, well, drinking soda is worse than drinking fruit juices or fruit juices are uh, worse than sodas. No, if you look at them as a whole, when we're talking again about liquid sugar, I want you to think about the things that you're putting in your body uh, and what effects they are having to your body. So now let's move on. When it comes to calories and sugar consumption, a lot of people think, OK, to lose weight, I just need to cut calories and that's it. Well, it's not just that cut and dry, right? You have to consider the quality of calories or the type of calories. And you also have to look at the amount of sugar content in a particular beverage. So from here on, I know I, I, sometimes I may go back and forth between food and drinks. But for this episode, I'm specifically talking about drinks, you know, beverages and so forth. So when it comes to calorie and sugar content, here are some examples of the average 12 ounce can or glass of some popular uh, high sugar beverages. Now, we've been talking about soda. The average 12 ounce can of soda contains roughly about 151 calories. 
and 39 grams of sugar. Now, think about that. It's 151 calories and 39 grams of sugar in one 12 ounce can of soda. Now, let me put this in perspective for you. It is recommended that we in America drink no more or consume no more than 50 grams of sugar per day, right? So that's 50 grams of sugar. That's what's recommended. So now if you drink one 12 ounce can of soda, that's 151 calories plus 39 grams of sugar. So already you just need 11 more grams to go to meet your daily recommended uh, amount of sugar not to exceed. Okay, so again, when I say the recommended amount of sugar, that means the recommended amount of sugar not to exceed 50 grams. Um, You following me? Okay. now what about a 12 ounce bottle of sweetened iced tea? Uh, That's 144 calories and 35 grams of sugar. What about unsweetened orange juice? Because some people say, okay, well, why don't the label says there's no sugar added or is unsweetened? Okay. So it is said that 12 ounces of unsweetened orange juice gives you 175 calories and 33 grams of sugar. All right. What about grape juice and unsweetened grape juice to be specific? Well, 12 ounces of unsweetened grape juice gives you 228 calories and 54 grams of sugar. So now we were talking earlier about the comparison between soda and fruit juices. So here's grape juice, unsweetened, 228 calories and 54 grams of sugar. So already with the sugar alone, you in that one 12 ounce uh, glass of unsweetened grape juice, you've already exceeded the recommended amount of sugar you should have for that day. Now, for most people, they're drinking not only a sugary drink, but they're also drinking, you know, eating high carb foods or eating something that's really sweet, like a donut or or a bagel with some, you know, cream cheese and some other stuff that they put on their jelly and so forth. So you're already exceeding the recommended limit when it comes to uh, sugar. Now, what about fruit punch? 175 calories and 42 grams of sugar. What about lemonade? That was my thing too, folks. I used to drink lemonade mixed with sweet tea every morning and lunch and uh, dinner sometimes. So that's 149 calories and 39 grams of sugar. Now, what about your sports beverage? I know I mentioned one before, which was uh, Gatorade. Uh, So here's 12 ounces. Now, I'm not saying this is specific just to Gatorade. I'm just saying your average sports, 12 ounce sports beverage, that's 118 calories and 22 grams of sugar. Now, with all of these, I don't know if you were taking notes, but go back and rewind if you want to hear this again. So in looking at this little chart that I'm looking at, the sports beverage is, I wouldn't say the healthiest, it's the least unhealthy, let's say, than the other drinks compared to the soda, the sweet teas, the unsweetened orange juice, grape juice, fruit punch, and lemonade. So you have to decide what's going to be good for you. For me, I went cold turkey and I said, hey, I'm stopping all of this. I'm not drinking soda anymore. I'm not doing the sweet teas anymore. I'm not doing the orange juice anymore. Grape juice, Fruit juices like fruit punch and lemonades and sports drinks, I cut them out because I was serious about losing weight, folks. And I was able to lose over 80 pounds doing what I'm telling you. It was just as I started learning about sugar and especially liquid, the liquid form of sugar and how quickly it raises blood sugar, I made a decision that no more. I wasn't going to consume it anymore. I was done with it. Okay, so now let's move on. Drinking sugary drinks and weight gain. There's a connection. It is said that frequently consuming sugar may promote excessive calorie intake and weight gain. Kind of, we touched on this a little bit already. This may be because it generally contains a high amount of fructose, which by itself is unhealthy when consumed in large amounts. Uh, Soda and other sweet drinks make it easy to consume large doses of sugar and fructose in a very short period of time. 
So like I mentioned earlier, when you get up in the middle of the night or let's say it's early in the morning, you have that one glass of orange juice or grape juice or even apple juice. And you're like, OK, uh, I want another glass and then another glass. And before you head out the door, or before you go to bed, you've already consumed three to four glasses of that uh, that drink, orange juice, apple juice, fruit juice or even a soda. Now, what about the connection between liquid sugar and blood sugar levels? Here it is in a nutshell. When it comes to sugary things that we put in our bodies, there's there's a thing called a glycemic index, right? Or glycemic load. Basically, how quickly does a specific thing raise your blood sugar over a period of time? Uh, for example, if you drink a glass of apple juice, because it's in liquid form, it hits your cells and it hits your bloodstream rather very quickly or quicker than if you just ate an apple. A whole apple uh, contains fiber, which slows down the absorption of glucose in the bloodstream and so forth versus a the liquid form of an apple, which is apple juice. It quickly goes to your bloodstream and then you have a quick spike. So think about the sodas and your fruit juices and so forth. One of the main reasons to cut back on it is you don't want to have your blood sugar just spiking really quickly uh, all the time. Because think about it, if you're consuming all of this liquid, all this soda and this liquid sugar, you're always driving up your blood sugar levels. And then guess what? You quickly come crashing down and then you start feeling hungry or thirsty uh, and so forth. So then what do you do? You go back and drink some more soda or fruit juice and so forth. And then your body's going through this up and down, up and down roller coaster. And then your body's also trying to produce insulin. And when it's when your pancreas specifically is kind of overworked, it's going in overdrive and then your body slowly becomes insulin resistant. When it comes to your blood sugar levels, we really have to pay attention to how these sugary drinks are impacting our blood sugar levels. And this is whether you have type 2 diabetes or not. You could be pre-diabetic and not even know it. You could have type 2 diabetes and don't even know it. So one of the things that I recommend people to do is definitely go and get your blood work done, kind of find out what's going on in your body, and then make some adjustments uh, from there. How much is too much when it comes to drinking soda or fruit juices and so forth? The amount of liquid sugar that can be consumed without causing health problems varies from person to person. Everyone's body is different. So let me say that again everybody's body or everyone's body is different. So what may impact you may not impact someone else and vice versa. The bottom line is it's very important to understand the effects of sugar on the body, how it affects your mental health, not only just with weight gain, but if you're dealing with mental fogginess, uh, forgetfulness, if you're dealing with uh, even frequent urination, you know, don't blame it on, you know, drinking too much water. There could be other things going on that you're not aware of. The, the reality is the more sugar sweetened beverages you drink, the greater your risk of developing health problems. I mean, don't take it from me. Uh, I'm just telling you by my own experience. And uh, the experiences that I've learned of others from others, there's studies that show this link uh, to health problems. So it's worth at least exploring and learning for yourself. Um, a high intake of liquid sugar is bad for your health, folks. Bottom line. So I recommend that you limit your fruit juice consumption, your soda consumption, um, your sports drink consumption to really two ounces per day. Or just simply avoid the beverages with added sugar altogether. You may say two ounces, that's nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, even if you limit it for a period of time, let's say the next 10 days or 21 days, the thing is you want to give your body a chance to begin the healing process, to begin the weight loss process and continue to overconsume these sugary drinks, folks. Uh, is not going to help you, is not going to help the cause. So the bottom line is liquid sugar is the sugar that's contained in any sweet beverage, such as soda, juice, or energy drinks. 
So because these drinks, these beverages don't make you full, they are prone to have a host of negative effects on your body. They make you want to consume more. And the more sugary um, things you consume, the more sugar you put in your body, the more effects it's going to have on your body. In fact, it is strongly linked to weight gain, as I mentioned before. High blood sugar, you know, you're, you're, they call it sugar in the blood, is linked to heart disease and other issues. So it's best to limit your intake of high sugary foods and liquid sugar and instead drink more beverages like plain water, your coffee and your hot teas uh, and so forth. Now, specifically with drinking water, I used to have a problem with drinking water. Uh, My problem was I didn't like the taste because water was boring to me at one point. It had no taste. And but the more I decided to consume less of soda and these fruit juices, the more I realized the overall benefits of drinking water uh, to my own health. I mean, you're talking about better sleep, uh, less headaches. I almost, it's almost rare for me to have headaches now because, you know, I'm not high, dehydrated like I used to be. Man, when I w- went into the hospital that weekend um, and learned about type 2 diabetes, I was severely dehydrated. Um, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on. So here's here's the reality, folks, when it comes to the overall benefits of drinking water. And again, I know some people are like, oh, I don't want to just be walking around with a gallon of water and all I'm drinking is water. I remember somebody on TikTok responded to a video that I had put out <laughs> about drinking water. She said, I'm not doing that. Talking about, uh, I think I had told everybody to go on a 10-day uh, detox from soda and sugary drinks and just drink water. She was like, I'm not doing that. I love soda too much. Besides, drinking water is too boring. So, <laughs> of course, I had um, some stuff I had to share with her so she can help to change her mind on her own. But here's here, here's the reality, folks. If you don't drink enough water each day, you risk becoming dehydrated. Your body, your cells need water. You need water to function properly. So when you drink less of water, you are going to feel fatigued. You're going to have uh, other issues. Um, yeah, and some of the warning signs of dehydration include weakness, low blood pressure, dizziness, confusion, you know, your urine may be a dark color and there's other things. So here are some benefits. Water helps to carry nutrients and oxygen to your cells. Water helps flush bacteria from your bladder. Water aids in digestion. Some people have some digestive issues and it could be because you're not drinking enough water. Water helps to prevent constipation. Water helps to normalize blood pressure. I check my blood pressure every morning, folks, and I'm off blood pressure uh, medication and I'm telling you, I feel great. And now what about joints and bones? You know, water helps to cushion joints, folks. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, water helps to protect organs and tissues. That's very big. Water helps to regulate body temperature. Water helps to maintain electrolyte, basically sodium balance. Water assists in treating migraines and headaches. So there's a lot of information out there, folks, on the benefits of drinking water. I just scratched the surface. There's also uh, tons of information out there on the Internet about the benefits of cutting sugary drinks from your diet. Folks, if nothing else, I want you to take this home with you. Sugary drinks, they give you no benefit. They don't give you the nutrients that you need to sustain good health. They're not helping you to focus better. You may say, well, Oscar, when I go to to the gym, I like drinking, you know, this energy drink because it gives me a boost of energy. Well, that caffeine that you're getting from that drink uh, and the sugar that's added to those drinks, those pre-workout drinks that a lot of people like to consume before they work out, yeah, it may have a temporary uh, benefit of boosting your energy, but at what expense though? So that's just something to keep in mind. You know, I used to drink the pre-workout powders and supplements. Not anymore. I don't need it. Uh, honestly, I I don't. You know, of course, extra lights. I sweat a lot and, you know, I do add a healthier electrolyte uh, mix to my water. 
um, and I sip on it while I'm working out. You know, I, I take a sip before, during and after. You know, I don't want my body to cramp up while I'm working out and so forth. So there's a lot to learn, folks. Um, I encourage you to increase your knowledge because knowledge is the key to life um, or at least it's a key to life. Learn more so you can do better and make better choices. Um, here are a couple of books I've been talking about um, for a while now, and I just like to just share these uh, with you so you can do what you want. If you want to increase your knowledge, read more, learn more, listen more, and it'll help you to make better choices. So James Clear, um, he wrote a book called Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. Jesse and Chuspe wrote a book called Glucose Revolution, The Life-Changing Power of Balancing Your Blood Sugar. And Dr. Mark Hyman has his 10-day detox diet book, The Blood Sugar Solution. It's a very good book, all three of these books. I have them on audio and I have the physical copies of these. And I just like to research these. There's a bunch of other books, folks, that um, I, I could recommend. Here's another book that I recommend. It's by Dr. Jason Fung. I'm actually listening to the audio book of it right now. And I have the um, hard copy. It's called The Diabetes Code, Prevent and Reverse Type 2 Diabetes Naturally. Um, Dr. William Lee wrote a book called Eat to Beat Disease. Um, those are the couple of resources that I recommend for you all to dive into so you can increase your knowledge, whether you have type 2 diabetes or not, if you want to prevent it and live a healthy lifestyle and make sure that you never have to deal with type 2 diabetes, I recommend these resources to increase your knowledge so that you can live a focused, fit lifestyle and feel alive. Well, folks, again, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast, helping diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. And as always, stay focused, keep moving, never go back, leap forward, bounce back because you can, my friend. And above all else, trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or a comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.